The A320 is equipped with two twin wheel main gear legs which retract inboard. And a dual wheel nose gear which retracts forward. The wheels of the main landing gear have carbon multi-disc brakes for efficient braking even at high temperature. The brakes are actuated by two independent sets of pistons, normal and alternate. Also, there are a tachometer for wheel speed indication, an anti-skate system, an automatic brake system, and optionally, a brake cooling fan and a tire pressure indicating system, TPIS. The nose gear is equipped with a nose wheel steering system, and the wheels have an option for a tire pressure indicating system, TPIS. Gear and doors are electrically controlled and hydraulically operated. Two landing gear control and interface units, LGCIUs, receive information independently from a relative set of proximity detectors installed on the landing gear and on the cargo doors. Note, the LGCIUs also receive information from sensors installed on the flaps attachments and send it to the SFCCs, refer to the ATA27 failure cases module. A landing gear complete operation, up and down, is ensured by one LGCIU, the other takes over when the gear cycle ends or if the active LGCIU fails. The LGCIUs also send proximity detector information to the ECAM and to various aircraft systems. Note. The information sent by a failed proximity detector or a failed LGCIU will relate to the safe flight condition. Consequently, some aircraft system users will wrongly see a flight condition or a ground condition or a not locked condition. The ECAM wheel page displays indications for the main landing gear and the nose landing gear, their related doors, the brake temperatures, and optionally, the tire pressures. In the center of the ECAM wheel page, green and amber messages can be displayed to provide normal and abnormal indications. This will be discussed further in the failure cases module. At the top of the ECAM wheel page, the spoiler indication is displayed. It will be used for ground spoiler position monitoring. This will be discussed in the flight controls chapter. Let's go to the cockpit to locate the controls and indicators for the landing gear, steering, and brakes. The landing gear selector lever is located on the center instrument panel. This lever will send up or down orders to the LGCIUs, which in turn control the sequence of the gears and doors. They will move hydraulically to the selected position, provided the airspeed is below 260 knots. Note, when up is selected, the main wheels are braked, while the doors open. The landing gear gravity extension handle is located on the center pedestal. When it is turned clockwise until the stop, the gears and doors are hydraulically depressurized and mechanically unlocked. The main gears will lock down, assisted by spring forces and the nose gear by aerodynamic forces. Just above the landing gear lever, is a panel which contains switches and indicators for the landing gear, the auto brake, the brake fan, and the anti skid and nose wheel steering. 
Let's take a closer look. The LG CIUs provide landing gear position indications. To the landing gear panel, from the LG CIU 1, only. And, to the wheel page and the landing memo, from both LG CIUs. Notice the indications when the landing gear is up. In transit. And down. Note, due to the efficiency of the proximity detector type, only one LGCIU indication is sufficient to confirm that the gear is correctly up or down. In that case, any warning activation must be considered as wrong, ECAM message must be disregarded and cancelled. The anti-skid and nose wheel steering switch allows the brake and steering control unit, BSCU, to control the anti-skid and the steering functions, to monitor the brake temperatures, and to compare the speed from the aiders with the wheel speed from the tachometers used by the anti-skid function for brake release orders. The switch is normally left in the on position. The steering hand wheels are located on each side of the cockpit, so either pilot can taxi the aircraft. The rudder pedals can also be used to steer the aircraft. For the steering control, the BSC receives orders from the pilot hand wheels and from the rudder pedals and the autopilot via the elevator rail run computer ELAC. Note, the BSCU will add algebraically each hand wheel and ELAC orders. So, a rudder pedal disconnect push button can be used during taxi to provide full authority to the hand wheel. Also, the rudder pedal and the hand wheel orders are limited depending on the ground speed. Refer to your documentation for more details. The auto brake part allows the BSCU to adjust the braking pressure according to the selected mode, low, medium or max, and to the anti-skid release orders. Manual braking is provided using the top of the rudder pedals. There are two independent braking systems. The normal braking which uses the pressure delivered by the green hydraulic circuit. The alternate braking, which uses the pressure delivered by the yellow hydraulic circuit, or by the accumulator. The normal braking is controlled by the BSCU, which uses braking orders, from the auto brake system, or from the brake pedals. The normal braking orders are also protected by the empty skid. When the normal braking is not available, the alternate braking is automatically activated and is controlled by an alternate braking control unit, ABCU, which uses the braking orders from the brake pedals. Also, the anti-skid protection will be available if the BSCU is still available. An acute press and brakes indicator is located on the main instrument panel. This gauge indicates the left and right braking pressures from only the alternate braking system and the pressure of the accumulator which is permanently maintained charged by the yellow hydraulic circuit. If the anti-skid protection is not available, the ABCU controls the alternate braking which uses the braking orders from the brake pedals. During braking operation, the pilots should not exceed the green sector, even if the ABCU has automatically limited the braking pressure at 1000 psi. If the yellow hydraulic circuit is not available, the accumulator is automatically used, and the ABCU controls the alternate braking, which uses the braking orders from the brake pedals. 
During braking operation, the pilots should not exceed the green sector, even if the ABCU has automatically limited the braking pressure at 1000 psi. The accumulator is designed to supply at least seven full brake applications. The parking brake handle is located on the center pedestal. When the parking brake is used, the ABCU and the anti-skid orders are inoperative. A non-modulated braking pressure is applied on the left and right brakes of the alternate braking system. If the yellow hydraulic circuit is not available, the accumulator allows the braking pressure to be maintained for around 12 hours. With the parking brake applied, from only the accumulator pressure, and with the green hydraulic circuit available if the brake pedals are used, the normal braking system is immediately activated. This allows the aircraft to be stopped in emergency if the parking brake pressure is not sufficient to hold it. During the preliminary cockpit preparation and after having set the parking brake to on, you have to check the EQ press and brakes indicator for normal indications. The EQ press indication must be in the green area. If not, the yellow electric pump can be used to recharge the accumulator. Warning! The yellow electric pump will pressurize the yellow hydraulic system, which in turn will pressurize the green hydraulic system by means of the PTU operation. So, get ground crew clearance before using this electric pump. Before push back, the nose wheel steering selector bypass pin must be in the towing position. This deactivates electrically the nose wheel steering hydraulic actuator, which is confirmed by a memo message as shown. When pushback is required, the parking brake must be released. Note, in case of power push by the main landing gear, the nose wheel steering must be kept connected and the hand wheel will be used for steering the aircraft. When pushback is completed, the parking brake must be set to on. Note, the nose wheel steering disconnect message has turned to amber because at least one engine is running. Then, you should request to remove the nose wheel steering bypass pin. For taxiing, you have to check that the parking brake pressure has dropped to zero. Then, as soon as the airplane is moving, the brake pedals must be used. So the airplane should slow down. This confirms the brake efficiency of the normal braking system, if no brake pressure indication is shown on the indicator. During taxi, the brake temperature must be monitored on the wheel page, which is the defaulted SD page for this ECAM phase. If an arc appears above the hottest brake temperature, exceeding 100 degrees Celsius, the brake fan push button switch, if installed, may be set to on. Note, when on, the brake fans are running, as long as the left main landing gear is down and locked. Also, the auto brake must be armed at max. Selecting max before takeoff improves safety, because in case of rejected takeoff, it ensures the maximum braking pressure as soon as the ground spoiler deployment order has been generated. Refer to the flight controls chapter. The auto brake arming indications are On the related mode push button switch, a blue on light is on. On the ECAM wheel page, a green message with the related selected mode is displayed. And on the EWD, the related blue item has turned to green on the takeoff memo. Before takeoff, the brake temperature must be checked. With the brake fan running, if the hottest brake temperature is above 150 degrees Celsius, 
the takeoff must be delayed, otherwise the brake fan push button switch must be set to off. Note, when the brake fans are running, the temperature sensors are ventilated by the blown air, and they will not indicate the true brake temperatures. Expect a significant temperature increase after stopping the brake fans. Takeoff must be always delayed if brake temperature is now above 300 degrees Celsius. While taxiing the aircraft, never use simultaneously the hand wheels and the rudder pedals, as their steering orders are algebraically added. Notice that the BSCU will limit in either direction the hand wheel orders up to 75 degrees until 20 knots and progressively to 0 degrees reaching 80 knots. The rudder pedal orders up to 6 degrees until 40 knots and progressively to 0 degrees reaching 130 knots. So, during takeoff, the aircraft direction will be controlled exclusively using the rudder pedals. After liftoff, the landing gear lever can be set to up, provided both main gears are not compressed and the nose wheel steering has been centered by its internal cam mechanism. Otherwise, the lever will be locked in down position by an interlock mechanism. Note, the interlock mechanism also prevents anyone from accidentally retracting the landing gear while the aircraft is on ground. When the landing gear lever is set to up, the landing gear retracts, as shown. Note, while the gear doors are opening, the main wheel normal brakes are automatically applied, and the nose wheels are braked by friction bands installed in the nose gear well. The use of the auto brake is preferable for landing. During the descent preparation, it is recommended to select medium mode for short or contaminated runways, and low mode, for long runways. Note, for landing, it is not recommended to use max mode. For landing today, we have armed the auto brake in medium mode, for you. Note, if the wheel page is displayed, it also indicates that the auto brake is armed. It is also indicated on the right memo, but only during the landing inhibition phases of the ECAM. Also, absence of braking pressure must be checked on the AQ press and brakes indicator. If residual pressure is indicated, you have to refer to the QRH. Few seconds after the ground spoilers are commanded to extend, the auto brake becomes active and sends progressive braking pressure in order to decelerate the aircrafts at selected rate. A green decel light comes on when the actual deceleration is 80% of the selected rate. Note, on a slippery runway, the selected deceleration rate may not be reached due to anti-skid protection. So, the aircraft will stop but without decel light. This does not indicate a malfunction. At any moment, the pilot may deactivate the auto brake by applying a sufficient deflection to at least one brake pedal or by deselecting the related mode. The auto brake deactivation is confirmed as shown. Note: If the ground spoilers are retracted, the auto brake will deactivate, but it will stay armed. After landing, the brake temperature must be checked to detect discrepancies between brakes and high temperature. Brake fan selection should be delayed for a few minutes after landing or done just before stopping the aircraft at the gate in order to allow thermal stabilization and to avoid oxidation of brake surface hot spots. Note, the brake fans must be used without delay for short turnaround times, or if the brake temperatures are likely to exceed the limitation, refer to your documentation. 
at the gate, and before releasing the brake pedals, the parking brake handle has to be set to on, unless the brake temperature is above the limitation. After engine shutdown, if one brake temperature is still above 300 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Celsius with brake fans on, the parking brake should be released after the chocks are in place. Then, when the brake temperature does not require to keep the brake fans on, the parking brake should be kept on, in order to reduce hydraulic leak rate in the brake accumulator.